Hello everyone, it's Mattsmas. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. I really do appreciate it. So once again, we are talking about main battle tanks. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Macava series and kind of its background, its history, uh, kind of facts and opinions on the actual vehicle itself. And then just an overview of myself, what I kind of think of these vehicles. Because uh, majority of my videos nowadays that have been talking about military vehicles are purely just opinionated um, sort of thoughts and opinions on how the vehicle operates and what I think of it. Because uh, I have a fond fascination with uh, main battle tanks and any kind of armoured vehicles and military equipment. So I like to just uh, throw these videos out there and see what people think of the vehicle itself, get some comments and feedback from you, um, and then kind of just give you an overview and opinion from myself. So, the Macava main battle tank, it's one of those vehicles that where every time I think about it, I always get the iconic little door in the back of the vehicle that the troops can get in and out of, and the chain and ball rear, I guess, RPG net on the back of the vehicle. Always something that kind of jumps into my mind when I think of this vehicle. Always kind of thought it looking like a big cheese wedge too, which being angular armor is obviously going to be something very effective for defense against uh, attack. But let's just talk about it in overview first, and then we're going to go over some of its features, just kind of give you a broad idea of what's going on with this vehicle. So the Macava main ta battle tank was an inevitable product of those bloody early days of the Jewish state's existence and the policies of foreign powers. The State of Israel came into being in 1948 and almost immediately an alliance of Arab nations declared war. Since then, Israel has existed in technically a state of war with each of its Arab neighbours except Egypt. Israel has fought five major wars in defence of its right to exist from 1948 all the way till 1982, when Israel invaded southern Lebanon to drive out Palestinian terrorists. However, it is not until 1967 that the Israeli government turned its attention to the creation of a main battle tank for the state itself. Israel and the surrounding area are either desert or rolling hills, which form an ideal tank country. During and after the 1967 war, Britain and France refused to supply certain categories of modern weapons to Israel. Alarmed, the Israeli government established a native defense industry so that the state security would not be compromised by political whims of outsiders. High priority was given to the development of a main battle tank. The Makava, which means chariot in Hebrew, was the result. So basically guys, uh, I guess we dropped the ball a little bit, uh, my own home nation, to provide Israel with equipment and services that could actually defend their country a little bit more. Uh, I do know that the Centurion was potentially going to be sold to them, I think there were some technicalities or issues going on there. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Israel decided let's do our own thing, we're going to go at it alone and make our own tanks, uh, which is, you know, Honestly, the way it should be. That's how I look at the defense industry. You want to make weapons that are there to protect or attack other nations or other terrorist organizations, whatever it may be, make your own. Get back into your industry, look after your own country's people, and start building and designing and procuring your own equipment. And I'm so pro for that, guys. Just, I know it's a bit of a side note, but I'm pretty impressed with Israel being able to do their own thing and procure their own tank and continue it going too. Not just dropping the ball and making some sort of potential screw up with the projects that have been made for this tank. They've kept it rolling, it's still serving today. So for the tank's design, the Makava combines the best features of American, British, French and captured Soviet tanks, all of which have been used extensively by Israel in the past. 
1967 war re-emphasized the fact that armor protection is extremely important for tanks, so much so that Israeli designers placed tank survivability first, armament next, and speed third. General Israel Tal assumed command of tank development project in 1970 and brought a professional soldier's experience to the design process, which is key, listen to your troops, and it's awesome that they did this. Macarthur production happened in 1978 and the new tank reached service units the following year, which is fast guys, that is fast production procurement for a main battle tank, very impressive. For a tank that does not have an auto loading main gun and carries a crew of four, the Macarthur has an extremely low silhouette, which is fantastic providing hull down cover positions and engaging targets behind cover. Its Hortzman style suspension system makes it one of the most mobile off-road tanks in the world today. The Macarthur 1 and Macarthur 2 are equipped with a 105mm gun which is small by today's main battle tank standards, but the Macarthur's fire, hurts, armoured piercing, fin stabilised discarding sabre rounds can still penetrate most modern main battle tank armour at ranges greater than 5000 yards. The tank is equipped with a laser rangefinder and is connected to a ballistic computer that gives the tank first round hit capability which is pretty standard for most armoured main battle tanks of the modern era. Israeli innovations in three other areas contribute to the Makava's effectiveness, reactive and heavy armour, enhanced crew protection, and efficient and simpler maintenance and repair procedures. And being that I am a tank mechanic, I would for sure say that repair procedures being updated and being adequate for this tank are very, very important. Armour descriptions and thickness are classified, but Israel statistics compiled after the 1982 invasion of Lebanon show that there is a 61% chance that a round striking a tank will penetrate. During the invasion of Lebanon, only 41% of the rounds striking the Makava actually penetrated. Of rounds striking a tank, there is a 30% chance of penetration into the crew compartment, and only 13% of all rounds striking Makava penetrated the crew compartment. This was due to the placement of the Macarver's engine up front and the thickness of the glacier armour belt. Normally 31% of all hits set a tank on fire, and fires destroy the tank within 80-90% to of the time. Only 15% of all hits cause fires in Macarver's, and only one Macarver lost to a fire as far as is known right now. The Macarver was designed with a fully armoured, self-sealing fuel tank system. Fireproof containers that provide one hour minimum protection of all ammunition and heavily armoured crew compartments. All crew members are required to wear protective asbestos clothing and the tanks are equipped with an extremely fast reacting fire suppression system built by Spectronics. The first Macarver 1 tanks were supplied to the IDF in April 1979, nearly nine years after the decision to produce the Macarver Mark 1 was taken. The Mark 1 tank has been designed and in accordance with the experience gained from IDF armoured battles in Israel's wars since the Sinai campaign 1956. The Macarver Mark 1 is unique in its basic concept, common to all generations of the Macarver Mark 1, according to which armour and survivability are the tank of its basic features. The tank's protection is based on all round space ballistic armour, and the deployment of tank systems around the crew, thus utilising basic elements and systems of the tank to actually protect the crew and ammunition. In addition to their specific functions, the most striking example of this concept is the placement of the power pack and engine and transmission at the front of the tank. Other factors that contribute to the Macarver Mark 1 survivability are low profile when into a firing position, elimination of flammable materials from the crew compartments, and storage of main gun ammunition under the turret ring well to the rear of the hull in heat resistant containers. The Macarver Mark 1 tank participated with a high degree of success in the Lebanon War in 1982. When the war started, Israel had around 200 to 300 Makava Mark I tanks. Production of the Makava Mark I continued up to 1983 when the Israeli Defense Force Armored Corps began to receive the Makava Mark II tanks. Lessons learned from the operation of the Makava Mark I tanks were applied to the Makava Mark II tanks, mainly in the following reasons. Improved mobility, improved fire control systems, improved specialized armor which is sadly completely restricted so we're not going to find out what that is, an internal 60mm mortar. The production of the Macarver Mark II tanks continued until the end of 1989, at which time the Macarver Mark III tanks started to come off the production line, and as you can see here guys, they are really getting the momentum of upgrading this tank, keeping up to date with modern day conflicts and battlefield uh, really risks that are there, which is really, really cool to see. And you can see now though that countries out there are starting to follow the same suit. They're realizing their vehicles need to be updated. Some of us are a little late to the party. The Israelis got it right. 
The MacArthur Mark III entered service in the IDF at the beginning of 1990. It is quite the sophisticated tank with some intense upgrades. The difference between the Mark III and Mark II in essence and not in degree are pretty much all systems and assemblies were new, except for the engine, and they are all of Israeli design and production. Among the prominent features of the MacArthur Mark III were the new and unique suspension system, the high powered engine and the powerful main new gun, and especially a new and unique concept of armour which again is highly restricted. Ballistic protection is provided by special armoured modules which are attached to the tank by bolted areas. These can easily be replaced when whenever better ballistic technology is introduced, which is happening obviously concurrently. Thus, the tank will remain young forever, but that's subjective to the systems that have been put in place today now too. We already know that uh, anti-tank guided missiles are starting to become a little bit less, uh, what's the word? A threat, I guess, with the kind of defense systems that are being put in place now. Israel actually has its own defensive systems, which I will talk about another day, not in this particular video, but it is applicable to the Macava series. During the Macava Mark III's year's production, a number of modifications have been introduced. The major ones being a modern fire control system with an automatic target tracker and a significant improvement in ballistic protection. The production of the Macava Mark III lasted until 2002, whereupon the Macava Mark IV was first fielded to the Armoured Corps. The Mark IV is slightly larger than the Mark III, and it is one of the most protected tanks in the world, listing in the top 10 main battle tanks. It does have new armour comparing to its predecessor, and the hull of the Macava Mark IV was actually redesigned to install its new engine. The front engine obviously increased its improved frontal armour protection. The Mark IV is also fitted with specified new modular armour that can be reconfigured to match specific threats. The bottom of the hull has been strengthened for better protection against landmines, and this tank can also be fitted with the Trophy Active Protection System, which, stay tuned guys, I will be doing a video on. The protection suite also includes an advanced threat identification and warning system. This tank is well protected against air launch, guided missiles and top-down anti-tank weapons. The Mark IV features an improved 120mm smoothbore gun developed by Israel Military Industries. It is further development of the Mark III tank's main gun. This gun is designed to sustain higher pressure generating higher mods of velocity and can fire various rounds including the LAHAT anti-tank missile round. The Mark IV continues to have a crew of four including its commander, gunner, loader and its driver. Furthermore, it can transport eight troops or three stretcher casualties in place of the ammunition load troops enter and lead the vehicle through a rear door hatch. The tank is powered by a General Dynamics V12 diesel engine and developed around 1500 horsepower which is pretty damn impressive for a small vehicle like this and delivers 25% more power compared to previous 1200 horsepower engine on the Mark III. The engine was originally developed by German NTU but is licensed and built by General Dynamics Systems in the USA. The same engine is used on the French Leclerc main battle tank which if you haven't checked out my video guys please go back in the past and check it out because I really do like that tank also. Unique layout of the Macava series makes this main battle tank a lot more free space for the troops and cargo at the rear of the hull. When the ammunition is unloaded the tank can carry up to 10 dismounts and this unique capability allows to deliver troops directly to the battlefield or evacuate them under protection. The Mark IV currently is not offered for export, but some of its systems and components are available to be sold to outside customers. So overview then, what do I think of this tank? Well clearly it's very very impressive, considering it's put protection over armament and mobility is very very impressive to me and that seems to be the way that even the Russians are going with their T-14 Armata, trying to get that crew survivability up. Uh, it's really interesting to see this tank has also been concurrently upgraded. As I said before, I think the IDF have got it right. They've got this tank to a perfection. I mean, they've been in conflict to the, since the dawn of time uh, and they know how to handle themselves and they don't mess around when it comes to the defense industry and clearly they've got this tank to a T in trying to get it updated and upgraded to different defensive and attack roles and different environments that it may need to go into. So personally, um, I actually really love this tank. What I will say though is it would be nice to maybe see a little bit more protection being placed onto this vehicle instead of the whole dismounts and, and all that sort of stuff going on. I don't really fully see the point in having dismounts and the infantry inside the back. I see where they're coming from but in my own personal opinion, I think if you're going to make a main battle tank, then make a main battle tank and stick to it. I think all that extra armor and room that could have been potentially be used by the troops instead is kind of a waste to me and that's just my own personal opinion. Overall though guys, I think Israel has got it right and mainly not just for the fact of the actual tank itself, purely for the fact that they have made their own vehicle to, to, 
procured it, designed it and produced it all by themselves and are continuing it rolling to this day. And to be honest, that makes sense. I mean, we're all starting to lag behind in the defense industry in the Western world because we're not quite realizing that, you know, if we can start making our own kit and designing it ourselves, we're going to be able to learn from the troops on the ground as well. And this is what this tank took from day one, from that Mark I variant. They said that they brought in a soldier's opinion to be able to determine what they need to improve, make better on the tank. And that's fantastic. When the armed forces listen to the troops on the ground and what is actually going on with their vehicles, they can get a good broad spectrum of ideas and input to actually make an informed decision on designing a vehicle. And I think they got it right. And that's, that's the most impressive thing to me on this tank. It's not all of its features, you know, its performances or the statistics. It is the fact that this vehicle was designed and continually upgraded and improved to make it what it is today. And that is clearly a very, very impressive vehicle for the modern day battlefield. And considering the environment on which Israel is in in the military world, very, very impressive. And I'm very glad that this tank is protecting them and being able to provide them with support that they need. Anyway, guys, I'd really like to hear your opinion on this vehicle. Let me know in the comments section below. Um, please keep it respectable. I completely understand that this vehicle uh, may have some controversy behind it. You know, I get that. Uh, but please try and keep it respectable. Um, and just be honest as well. If you don't, you know, agree with the vehicle, if you don't like its features or what it does, then let me know and, and kind of give me a bit of an explanation instead of just saying it's crap. Because it'd be nice to kind of have a, you know, a polite debate and see how it goes. So thank you again for watching, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. All the best, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new to my channel, and bye bye!